Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about some criticisms I have of the modern day feminist movement. I'm going to be talking about specifically what it looks like when a movement is dissolving in upon itself, when it's achieved most of its goals and is kind of flailing around trying to find something to grasp onto. I feel like as the goals of feminism get less and less clear we're seeing at its dying stage if it's not already dead. Most suppressed groups desire one of three outcomes, either assimilation, segregation, or overthrow. I'm going to talk about how each of these three concepts have shown themselves throughout the history of the feminist movement and where I feel like the feminist movement is going today. I want to emphasize here that the point of every single movement, every social justice movement, every identity politic movement is to achieve its specific goals and then dissolve, to be no longer needed. Every movement has a desired end date. It is not meant to last forever. And while I'm obviously extremely grateful for the history of the feminist movement and the fact that I am equal to a man today, I do think that when you hold on to a movement longer than is necessary, messy and ugly things start to come about, which is what this video is going to focus on. And then the other obvious caveat here is I am talking about American feminism. I'm talking about the United States. It might branch out to the West as a whole. I don't exactly know what it's like in other Western countries, but obviously on a global scale, women are very clearly oppressed. There's a lot of horrific things that are happening to women worldwide, a lot of oppressive cultures and societies and laws and regulations. But unfortunately, that's not what this video is going to be about. I'm going to be talking specifically about the United States. So if that's not what you're here for, I guess you could click off now. And then the last thing I want to mention before diving straight in is I do think it's okay to focus your issues on one gender or another. I don't think that there's anything wrong with solely focusing on women's issues. I don't think there's anything wrong with solely focusing on men's issues. There are aspects of everyday life that disproportionately affect each gender regardless of legal status. For instance, men are more likely to be homicide victims. They're more likely to be homeless. They're more likely to take on dangerous jobs or die in war, and women, of course, are more likely to be victims of sexual assault. They're more likely to have eating disorders and other mental illnesses, and they have separate concerns regarding reproductive health and maternity leave and all of those kinds of topics. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with advocating for these certain gendered issues. There are a plethora of issues in the world. You're allowed to take up any cause that you feel is necessary. But the feminist movement I'm talking about in this video is not just, you know, focusing on women's issues. It's the feminists who claim that we're under an oppressive patriarchy that all women are oppressed, that every man is oppressive and hateful and evil, and the kind of feminists who seem to be lobbying for their own gender's privileges rather than wanting to be treated as an equal, the kind of feminists who, if you bring up an issue that affects men, claim you're doing it to be sexist or that you're a pick-me girl, the kind of radical feminists that want to completely alter society and make it a matriarchy, honestly, or who just, no matter what, no matter what political and legal gains are made by women, refuse to accept that women have just as many rights as men. And I know already this video is getting into controversial territory, but it is what it is. That's my channel if you're new here. And so to begin this video to try to understand the modern day feminist movement and the feminist history, I wanna explore the question of whether or not the United States is a patriarchy today. So a lot of modern day feminists, especially the more radical you get in the radical feminist territory, justify their existence and their demands on the idea that America is an oppressive patriarchal society in which women are not equal and are not free. And this is something that I've never fully understood personally, and I'm obviously open to any discussion in the comments, but I've never had a feminist explain to me how exactly the United States is a patriarchy and under what conditions it would no longer be a patriarchy. It's true that most government positions are held by men and we haven't yet had a female president, but we certainly have the option of that. There's nothing holding back a woman from becoming president or a woman from holding positions of power in office. And so in this case, does patriarchy end when we get a female president? Does it end when we have 50-50 representation in the Senate? If it becomes 51% or 60 or 70% woman in the Senate, does that make us a matriarchy instead? And given that a woman's vote matters just as much as a man's, there's no discrepancy there, then doesn't the fact that we live in a representative democracy mean that even if our leaders are male, it would be in their best interest to also also serve the rights of women who are half the population and are also responsible for getting these people voted in. I understand that politicians oftentimes do not give a fuck about anyone that they're meant to serve, but in a theoretical sense, does it matter what gender is representing you if they have your goals and desires in mind? Also, in my opinion, it seems like women do have legal equality, which I will get into, which makes me believe that as time goes on, government will more naturally become more inclusive. Of course, there's differences in terms of the jobs men choose to take versus women, and a lot of this is biological. A lot 
lot of its social structure as well. But personally, I'm of the belief that not every sector of society and every sector of government has to be exactly 50-50 men and women in order for women to have an equal voice in politics. And a lot of people who talk about how women are so oppressed don't mention all the ways in which women are very clearly succeeding even faster than men in certain aspects. For instance, most people who go to college and graduate from college are women. Although the discrepancy is very small right now, women actually do hold most of the jobs in the workplace. And it's predicted that as our economy shifts more to a service-based sector, more and more women are going to outpace men in the workforce solely based on the jobs that they choose versus men. And something else that I can't make sense is why there's a diversity quota in STEM fields when that doesn't exist in most other fields. A lot of tech companies and computer science style jobs and platforms have diversity quotas where they're trying to up the representation of women in their fields, which I guess there's nothing inherently wrong with, but it seems disproportional to this drive in other fields. For instance, women are more likely to be nurses, they're more likely to be teachers, there's no diversity quotas to make sure that's 50-50 male and female. And other male dominated fields like construction workers don't have a diversity quota to bring more women in. It seems to be very located on STEM and this is a constant issue when it comes to the feminist movement. They're always talking about how women are discriminated in STEM fields, but honestly, I don't see any data to support that. I obviously don't think any woman should be barred from STEM jobs because there are a lot of very talented women who excel in those fields. But we also have to admit that there are gender differences when it comes to the kinds of jobs that men and women take. Women are more likely to value interpersonal relationships when it comes to the work that they choose, which is why they are overrepresented in teaching and nursing and so on. Whereas on average, men are more likely to be comfortable working with computers and systems, which is why they're overrepresented in STEM fields and engineering and physics. And I don't think that there is anything wrong with this. I don't think that there should be a value judgment placed on STEM fields versus teaching. I don't understand why so many women, it seems, believe that being a teacher isn't as valuable as being in STEM simply because more women are teachers and more men are STEM majors. It's something that's always confused me, so if you have any insight, definitely comment it down below. But it seems that feminists need this idea of patriarchy in order to justify their existence, but when it comes to actually putting a definition to that patriarchy, they oftentimes can't come up with an answer. And that's not me saying the patriarchy doesn't exist, but I am saying that if it does exist, it seems to be a very, very minor form because I personally cannot see any way in which women politically and legally are oppressed by men. And then the last thing I wanna mention in this section before moving on is I do think social attitudes change following legal changes. Obviously sexism still exists and I will get to that at the end of this video. But generally speaking, once legal equality is passed, the social attitudes and changes follow. I think the most clear example of this if you live in the United States is homosexuality. Sexuality. I remember growing up here in California, literally the most liberal state that exists, and being a kid and seeing my state vote against gay marriage back in 2008. And I also remember growing up and it was totally normal for the majority of people to be against not just gay marriage, but homosexuality in general. People had debates about this for fun back in high school. It was just an issue that was very divisive, a very hot button issue. And I remember in 2015 when gay marriage was legalized throughout the whole country, how fast people's attitudes change. The same people who literally two years before then would talk about how being gay is a sin, how it shouldn't exist, how it's wrong, etc. Suddenly shifted to being like, you know what, whatever, it's a free society, you know, they, they could do what they want, it's all right. And obviously not everyone's minds change. There's a lot of people who are still against homosexuality, even here in the West. But in general, following that legal change, there was a huge change socially that happened very, very fast. And when it comes to women's legal equality, this has been around a lot longer than gay marriage. And I feel like you'd be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't think that men and women should have the same legal rights. Though obviously exceptions always exist and I'm not trying to discount that. With that being said, let's do a very brief history of the waves of feminism. Historically, American feminism focused on women having equal rights as men and assimilating into the dominant culture, both politically and socially. The first wave of feminism had the very clear objective of women's suffrage, women earning the right to vote, although voting without discrimination wasn't fully realized until 1965. The second wave, in contrast, was mostly focused on social equality with a lot of legal gains as well. This is when the Equal Pay Act was passed in 1963, which made it illegal to discriminate based on Gender, how much you pay your employees for the same work and the same jobs. It also led to the right of birth control and Roe versus Wade. It granted women the right to obtain credit cards separate from their husbands. And basically there was a lot of legal and social gains made with second wave feminism. Towards the end of the second wave of feminism, as I spoke about in my previous video, came the feminist sex wars, where some feminists deemed activities such as modeling, participating in porn 
pornography or being sex workers of any kind was detrimental to women as a whole, that it was holding women back. This is when a lot of women said it was oppressive for women to wear makeup or to do their hair nice and so on. And this greatly splintered the movement and a lot of people just decided that this was the end of feminism. All the main goals of feminism had been reached, all the legal rights were acquired, and the feminist movement had just turned into dog fighting over women's sexual autonomy and so on, and people just decided that those feminists can believe what they want, but the rest of us are just going to move on and be equal members of society. And then in the 90s, we saw the third wave of feminism. This began with Anita Hill's testimony against Clarence Thomas surrounding sexual harassment, and most of the goals around third wave feminism had to do with sexual harassment as well as gender roles. But ultimately, the third wave of feminism lacked a cohesive goal, and it was basically considered an extension of the second wave, but slowly dying out. And now apparently we're in the fourth wave of feminism. I like I tried researching for hours. I still don't really understand what this fourth wave of feminism is. I understand the big catalyst was the hashtag Me Too movement. That seems to be just about it, which is why I feel like right now when it comes to gender equality, it's better to focus on specific issues as they relate to gender rather than pretending like there's some large unifying force that every single woman in America is oppressed under as it was with voting and legal rights and so on. And so that leads me to the decentralized purpose of modern day feminism. And so the main reason I feel like the feminist movement is dying today, which again is not a bad thing, that's always been the goal, is because there doesn't seem to be any kind of unifying force that's oppressing women on the basis of sex here in the United States. When it came to voting laws, that affected every single woman. When it came to equal workforce laws, that affected every single woman except for maybe the stay-at-home moms. But nowadays, there isn't a unifying law that is oppressing all women anymore. Even when it comes to abortion and so on, there are women who have differing views on that. There are a lot of women who are actually against abortion. There are also a lot of women who wouldn't mind living in a mildly patriarchal society. And that's why I feel like we're at a point in society where we should be focusing on specific issues rather than the guise of feminism as a whole, rather than the idea that women on a whole are oppressed all in the same ways. We can focus on sexual assault and harassment, but that's not an inherently feminist issue. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of men's issues that are deserving of just as much recognition. Men aren't oppressed legally, at least not in my opinion, but there are still aspects of social life that disproportionately affect them. And honestly, there are certain laws that disproportionately affect each gender. For instance, I think that the fact that prostitution is still illegal here in the United States, which is crazy since we're supposed to be a free country, I think that disproportionately affects women because it leads to a lot more women getting smuggled into the trade. They have less protections and legal rights and are in a very very vulnerable position as a result. In the same way, there's the whole military draft. Only men have to sign up for the military draft, and I know they're trying to change that to include women. <laughs> which I'm not happy about even though it's equality, but that is a legal issue that affects men disproportionately. So there are certain legal aspects that need to be kind of hammered out, but it's not on such a wide scale that in my opinion, we could say that women are solely oppressed or that men are solely oppressed. I think this next phase of gender equality really needs to be looking at both of these things. And that's why the feminist label I sometimes feel is not really inclusive when it comes to gender equality. And this is also reflected in the fact that most Americans do want gender equality, but don't identify as feminists. People stopped identifying as feminists towards the end of the second wave when it seemed like all of our legal rights were pretty much achieved. But this naturally raises the question of what are feminists fighting for and why are they still holding on to this movement? And so that brings me to my next section, which is called Holding On Too Long, which is a very uncreative title, but there you go. When a society is free and equal along gender lines, holding on to feminism as an ideology sometimes feels like it's being used to restrict women's freedoms. We see a lot of fear tactics coming from the feminist movement to make us believe in this all-encompassing patriarchy, and so we will join them on their team and fight for whatever aims that they tell us to fight for. When it comes to a lot of fear and shaming tactics, I talk about this in my last video on the internalized male gaze. That's one specific example in which I go somewhat deep into, where women are trying to control other women and other women's autonomy, but blaming it on the patriarchy rather than for their own need for control. I also discuss how feminism is used to shut down political dissent, even when that political dissent is for the goal of achieving gender equality. Basically, as less and less women feel like feminism is necessary and believe that our goals have been achieved, you see more and more scare tactics coming from feminism to try to get more people on board with their ideology. And for this section, I want to read a quote from The True Believer. I know I've quoted from this book before on this channel. Hopefully it's not the same quote, but I really do love this book and I'll link it down below. But he states, Here, as elsewhere, the technique of a mass movement aims to infect people with a malady and then offer the movement as a cure. To confess and repent is to slough off one's individual distinctness and separateness, and salvation is found by losing oneself in the holy oneness of the congregation. I think one of the reasons why so many feminists proselytize to everyone and claim that everyone needs to be a feminist is to justify and solidify their own beliefs in the movement. 
The more that a person personally identifies with a movement, the more that any challenges to that ideology will be resisted. People tend to take criticisms of their ideology as a personal criticism, and this sort of orthodoxy leads to shame and exclusion as I talked about in my last video. At least among the most radical of feminists, it seems like it's their doctrine that binds them together, not their actual values, or at least their self-proclaimed values. But I'll get into that more in just a second. But my main question when it comes to these feminist radicals is who are they selling these beliefs to? What is the point of this? Is this just for advertisements to be able to use girl power as a way to sell stupid products? Is it a way for politicians and lobbyists to secure an identity vote? Is it a means to give people in a privileged society something to rally behind? Or is it just a way to get more clicks on a BuzzFeed article? I genuinely don't know who this modern strain of feminism is for, but I do know that constantly asserting this belief that we should all be afraid of this patriarchy and that we're all victims does lead to more fear and division, which makes us easier to control as a population. And I know that sounds a little bit conspiratorial, so you don't have to believe me if you don't want to. But if you make someone afraid of something and then you sell them a movement as a cure, it's easy to shift things within that movement for nefarious reasons in order to gain power, money, etc from the people who you proselytized. And that leads me into this last major point, which is when feminists become the thing they hated. As I stated earlier, an oppressed group within a given society generally has one of three goals, either assimilation, segregation, or overthrow. Historically, the feminist movement has mostly been about assimilation, and I think when you ask most feminists, and if you ask most men's rights activists what their goals are, they would say the same thing. They want just an equal and just society for both genders, where we can both live amongst each other peacefully. And when it comes to segregation, we've seen this before in the feminist movement with the lesbian separatists, who said that having sex with men was giving in to the oppressor and that it was wrong and anti-feminist, and believed that women should practice political lesbianism, which is basically pretending like you could choose to be a lesbian and doing that and separating from men completely. The idea being that the patriarchy won't exist if men don't exist. And I'm sure there are probably still women and men who want this as an option. They want to just be completely disconnected from the opposite sex. But something that I've seen a lot in the modern day feminist movement, particularly within radical feminists, that is most concerning to me is the idea of overthrow, which is basically radicalization and replacement rather than assimilation. And most radical feminists who want to be the ones in charge and the ones oppressing men don't say this blatantly and they don't pretend like that's their goal. They instead try to advocate for this goal under the guise of victimhood. I've actually read in some radical feminist forums, the idea that gender only exists for men to oppress women. The fact that we have the concept of biological sex and that we have gender is only used for the gain of men at the expense of women, which doesn't really make any sense, but a lot of these things don't really make any sense. Although I have had an argument in real life with someone who tried to tell me that biological sex didn't exist. But basically, if you believe that gender only exists to serve the patriarchy, you either believe that one, women are naturally inferior, or two, men are naturally evil and oppressive, or three, both. And if those were realities, it makes sense for your option to be, I need to change society so that way I could be the one in charge to keep these evil men subordinate so that way they don't oppress me instead. But this is the mentality that leads to the justification of oppressing your enemies rather than finding common ground. And it's the shift from feminism as being a political thing into being a personal thing that leads to excessive control, as I talk about in my male gaze theory, trying to make everything have to be feminist. And if you don't act in a feminist manner, it's because you're either a pick me girl or you're an internalized misogynist. For instance, on YouTube, there's a lot of videos going around like, is this TV show feminist? Is it feminist to shave your legs? Is having an OnlyFans feminist or is it bad for women? People are literally using feminism as a way to gain control over other people and their actions. And also, I don't understand this drive because why does everything have to be feminist? But I already talked about that before. Like, why can't OnlyFans just be a job? Does it really have to be empowering? Most jobs aren't empowering, let's be honest. But basically, a lot of feminists are lobbying to be a privileged group rather than an equal one. Equality comes with its downfalls. Being respected as an equal rather than being treated as a victim or a privileged class isn't as easy all the time. There are certain benefits and downfalls that comes with each of those three things, you know, superiority, equality, or victimhood. But overall, you kind of just have to pick one. You don't really get to pick and choose which aspects of those three things you like and make your own conglomerate version, which a lot of feminists seem to try and be doing. But now that I've been talking for too long and it's starting to get too dark outside to record, I guess I'll go into my concluding thoughts on this matter. One of my big questions is why is resentment so high when we've never been so equal? I come across so many women who are openly very sexist towards men. And what's most surprising to me, honestly, is the fact that they still have boyfriends. I was around a group of women recently who got into this conversation of why are men so useless? Which if you're gonna criticize men for something, why would you pick useless? They literally built the entire world and civilization around us. But they were saying, why are men so useless? Yada, 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 and bitching and complaining. And I literally got up and went to the bathroom, but, but what I don't understand is why do these women have boyfriends? Like what kind of man is putting up with this kind of thing? I know so many women who around their significant others will openly say things like men are trash or I hate men or men hate women, et cetera. 
and yet their boyfriends never call them out for this. It's it's not something that I understand personally because I would never have sex with someone who doesn't respect me as an equal. Maybe if I was younger and more insecure, I would, but not anymore. But I do think that there is a double standard where a woman can openly hate men and it's fine, but if a man does that to a woman, he's very clearly in the wrong and sexist and engaging in hate speech and so on. And I just think it's very interesting. Obviously, there are a lot of men who are extremely sexist towards women. I am just saying it is possible to be sexist against men as well, and it's something that I see a lot. But where does this hatred against men and hatred against women get us? In my opinion, it only serves to make us more divided and more sexist. Imagine if every day you walked out the door and a bunch of women said you're trash, you deserve to die, etc., you're disgusting. I feel like eventually for most people it would make them hate women. In the same way that if you're a woman and you go outside and everyone's saying you're a dirty slut and a whore and a bitch, it's gonna make you hate men. And it's only gonna make you guys hate each other more and more until we're more and more divided. Saying men are trash isn't gonna make them respect you and calling women whores isn't gonna make them wanna sleep with you. And the more extreme and sexism that people get, I feel like the worse it becomes. It just gets more and more divided. But I digress. Anyways, the last thing I wanna end this video on is just to emphasize again, I don't think there's anything wrong with focusing on women's issues specifically. I don't think there's anything wrong with focusing on men's issues specifically. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with calling yourself a feminist or a men's rights activist as long as your actual goal is gender equality. I'm just advocating for looking at your politics and your beliefs and seeing if they're actually in line with what you think they are because I think a lot of people can get misguided very easily because there are issues that affect both sides and I just, I don't know. I'm not trying to have a come together peaceful moment at the end here, but that's kind of what's happening. I just think we need to listen to each other more and kind of move past this thing. I think we should gratefully wave feminism goodbye. It's served its purpose here in America at least. And it's time to focus on gender equality as it relates to both sexes rather than just on women. And again, if you're a feminist globally, if you're a feminist in a very oppressive society, major props to you genuinely. There are so many societies in which women have no legal rights and are like legitimate property of men. And this is a huge issue. And I know everyone has different ideas when it comes to globalism, moral relativism, these kinds of things. But I think one of the things that also bothers me about this Western view of feminism is how much it ignores actual female oppression throughout the world. If you are a white middle-class woman in America, <laughs> you're not oppressed. I'm sorry, but you're not. Anyways, that's my video. Sorry if it was very controversial. Sorry if you're angry right now. Let me know your thoughts no matter what state that you are in. Subscribe to my channel if you're interested in this kind of thing, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.